Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Human Capital Research Project webinar. My name is Kelly Okuji Wilson, and I'm the project manager of the Human Capital Research Project and the sector analyst for the healthcare sector at SASB. In this webinar, we will cover some frequently asked questions about human capital, pr primarily addressing how the issue of human capital is covered in the codified standards and the Human Capital Research Project Plan. So let's jump right in. A question that often comes up is how does SASB define human capital? SASB defines human capital as a sustainability dimension that addresses the management of a company's human resources, which we define as employees and individual contractors, as key assets to delivering long-term value. Under the sustainability dimension, we cover three major issues, which are firstly, employee health and safety, which addresses a company's ability to create a safety culture for those that operate in dangerous working environments. Some topics that are covered under employee health and safety are workforce health and safety and driver working conditions, for example, which can be measured by total recordable incident rate, near miss frequency rates, fatality rates as, applies, as applied to employees and contracted employees. The second area covered under this dimension is labor practices, which addresses working conditions in the management of labor relations in industries that rely on economies of scale and compete on the price of products and services in an industry with legacy pension liabilities. So some ex topics that are covered under labor practices include labor relations and labor practices, which are measured by, for example, percentage of active workforce covered under collective bargaining agreements, an average hourly wage, and or percentage of employees earning minimum wage by region. The third area is employee diversity, inclusion, and engagement, which addresses incentives and compensation, as well as the attraction and retention of employees in highly competitive or constrained markets for specific talents or education. Topics that are included in this area are recruiting and managing a global and skilled workforce or employee recruitment, inclusion, and performance, which are measured by, for example, percentage of gender and racial or ethnic group representation based on different workforce levels, like executive management versus non-executive management versus professionals and all other employees. Another measurement is voluntary and involuntary turnover rate for different workforce levels. Under the human capital definition, um, human rights and community, community relations are largely excluded from the definition. And this is covered in its own general issue category under the social capital sustainability dimension. Another topic that is largely excluded from the definition of human capital is labor conditions in the supply chain. This is covered in the supply chain management general issue category under the business model and innovation sustainability dimension. So as you may be aware, human capital is an important issue to many industries. However, human capital issues can manifest in many different ways depending on the industry that one is, is examining. In order to understand this concept, we performed an analysis on a broad definition of human capital on our codified standards. Hence the title, Human Capital Management Related, to highlight that some topics address a human capital element that are not exclusively under the human capital sustainability dimension. Some examples of where a human capital element may appear outside of the human capital sustainability dimension include disclosure topics like accident and safety management, operational safety, emergency preparedness and response, media pluralism, and labor conditions in the supply chain. The purpose of this analysis was to illustrate at the disclosure topic and metric level where human capital appears. Out of the 77 industries that SASB covers, the issue of human capital appears in 65% of all industries. Out of 195 unique disclosure topics, human capital related issues are addressed in 12% of all disclosure topics. And out of 981 metrics, human capital related metrics metrics appear in 12% of all of SASB's metrics. So let's do a quick review of SASB standard terminology, and more importantly, how the elements of the SASB standards fit together in the context of human capital. One of SASB's main value propositions is that our standards are industry specific. The industry specific nature of the standards are addressed in the disclosure topic level. It is also where financially material impacts of relevant sustainability sustainability issues are addressed. So 
So to put it together, here is a visualization that steps through how the standards are constructed. As we discussed, SASB defines human capital as one of five sustainability dimensions. This dimension addresses three general issue categories or relevant sustainability issues, one of which is employee health and safety. If we take one industry, such as oil and gas services, which is an industry under the extractives and minerals processing sector, the disclosure topic is tailored specifically to oil and gas services, which is workforce health and safety. The accounting metric is a performance metric for which um, this specific disclosure topic for oil and gas services is total recordable injury rate, fatality rate, near miss frequency rate, total vehicle incident rate, and average hours of health, safety, and emergency response training for full-time employees, contract employees, and short service employees. Each accounting metric is supported by a technical protocol, which provides specific and detailed guidance on how to report the accounting metric. So let's look at some specific examples of human capital disclosure topics. In this example, we are looking at two different industries and sectors. The construction materials industry, which is an industry in the extractives and minerals processing sector, and the road transportation industry within the transportation sector. As you, as you can see, both industries share the same human capital general issue category, employee health and safety. However, they begin to differ at the disclosure topic level in order to address industry-specific and financially material issues related to that particular industry. For example, in the construction materials industry, general workforce health and safety is a key concern in this labor-intensive industry with a high exposure, exposure to dangerous materials like silica. Therefore, this industry measures the number of reported cases of silicosis, which is the condition of the lungs caused by the inhal inhalation of silica, to assess a key financial risk related to workforce health and safety. In contrast, the road transportation industry's key concern for its workforce is driver working conditions. Therefore, in this industry, the disclosure topic is driver working conditions and is measured by total recordable incident rate and fatality rate for direct employees and contract employees. So let's look at another example. In this example, we are again looking at two different industries and sectors, the biotechnology and pharmaceuticals industry, which is an industry in the healthcare sector, and the semiconductors industry, which is in the technology and communication sector. Again, both industries share the same human capital general issue category, employee diversity, inclusion, and engagement. However, the disclosure topics are different to address the industry-specific financially material impacts of this issue in the context of this industry. For the biotechnology and pharmaceutical industry, a key issue is employee recruitment, development, and retention due to the high need for highly skilled and, and a technical workforce. Given that highly skilled and technical labor is in high demand in certain industries, the labor market for this type of worker is highly competitive and retention of these types of employees can be a financially material issue. Therefore, we measure voluntary and involuntary turnover rate for executives, senior managers, mid-level managers, professionals, and all others to measure retention. In contrast, in the semiconductor industry, a key issue is recruiting and managing a global and skilled workforce, which can have a significant portion of its workforce as foreign nationals or employees located offshore. Therefore, we measure percentage of employees that are foreign nationals and located offshore to measure the relative size of this workforce compared to the size of the company's total workforce operations. Now that we have laid a foundation on, on how the issue of human capital appears in our codified standards, let's look at the current human capital research project plan. The, gen the genesis of this project was the result of several key signals indicating strong market interest and engagement. The first indicator was a key shift in the market's prioritization of human capital management issues, which include the US SEC modernization of reg Regulation SK rulemaking proposal, the Human Capital Management Coalition, or HCMC's rulemaking petition to the US SEC, and the most recent 2019 Business Roundtable Stakeholder Capitalism Statement. The second indicator was increasing regulation and policies globally, which include ISO 30414, the EU Commission Directive 2014-95 EU, the, the 2015 UK Modern Slavery Act, the California Gig Economy Bill, 
and Share Action's Workforce Disclosure Initiative. And the third indicator was our SASB Feedback Network through our Investor Advisory Group, or IAG, and Standards Advisory Group, or SAG, which pulled human capital as one of the top issues that SASB should address in its standards going forward. Given strong market interest and engagement on this topic, SASB formally approved a research project on the topic so that we could assess the scope and prevalence of human capital-related themes across our 77 industries, in addition to emerging and evolving human capital issues, and further develop our evidence-based and market-informed view on human capital. Therefore, the primary objective of this project is to produce a framework that enables us to sharpen our focus on human capital capture additional evidence based on significant new developments and research in this area, and apply this consistently across our 77 industry standards to enhance the way which is addressed in each industry. The framework will enable us to assess these human capital issues on an industry by industry basis. The scope of this project includes not only the production of this framework, but also extensive research and stakeholder outreach with investors, companies, and subject matter experts to help gather evidence and form the foundation of our evidence-based view. This framework will enable us to develop standard-setting projects to drive standard revisions going forward. So how does SASB expect to assess human capital in the standards through this project? To answer that, we have provided an overview of the key project plan components, which we bucket into three main parts. The first part is answering fundamental key questions about human capital, such as what is human capital? How is human capital currently incorporated in the codified standards? Why and where are there areas of opportunity for improvement? And what is the purpose of the framework? The second key component is gathering evidence. We plan to accomplish this through a literature review phase to ensure that our work is evidence-based and market consultations to ensure that our work is market-informed. The literature review phase intends to identify broad human capital themes, both known and evolving issues, and tie those to general industry characteristics and potentially financially material impacts. After this phase, we have a market consultation in order to validate, vet, and build upon our literature review findings through market feedback. The third component of this plan structure is to develop the framework, which will take place in two phases, a preliminary development phase, where we will build our initial framework before the main market consultation phase, and then a final framework development phase, which incorporates market feedback from the market consultation. The framework will then be finalized, and the findings from this project will be summarized in a written narrative. To help visualize what this framework could look like, we have provided an example of this framework here. As noted, the framework will ultimately serve as the representation of how we can connect relevant human capital issues identified through certain value drivers to potential financial impacts. In order to help illustrate this example, we have used the existing human capital general issue categories, but these categories could change depending on the outcome of this project. So stepping through the logic of this framework, let's take the top row as an example. Starting from the left-hand side with the identified value drivers, it is clear that workforce demographics are shifting in which millennials are a growing and significantly increasing size of the current workforce. So globally, the composition of the labor force is changing. Second, in part due to the shifting workforce demographics globally, the social contract between employee and employer is changing. As millennials become an increasing portion of the global workforce, their views are changing the social contract between employee and employers. Generally speaking, millennials are seeking jobs that are fulfilling and mission-driven and not always strictly based on pay. It is no longer the norm to stay with a company for decades. As a result, companies are being forced to reconsider how they attract, develop, and retain their employees. Lastly, technology and automation is changing the way work is done. Due to the prolific rise and rapid scaling of technology and automation, businesses are operating differently to gain efficiencies and develop competitive edges over their competitors. As a result, the skill sets demanded are changing. One consequence of this is that highly skilled and technical workers are in high demand, placing additional competition for this type of labor among certain industries. As a result, these factors impact the composition of a company's workforce and how they engage their employees. So what does this mean for the financial impact of a company? 
if you're recruiting for a highly skilled or highly technical workforce, it could mean an increase in labor costs, so an increase to your expenses, driven by the supply and demand of this type of labor. But it could also mean an increase in your intangible assets from the intellectual capital produced from this highly skilled workforce through research and development, for example, like patents. So to answer another commonly asked question, what does the timeline for this project look like? This projected timeline shows our key project plan milestones mapped to our target dates. As noted in the previous slides, the focus of this project will be divided into three key phases of evidence gathering to support our evidence-based view, followed by an extensive market consultation phase to ensure this view is market-informed and the development of the final framework and publication of our findings based on this research. During the development of this project plan, we weighed the significant scope of work that needs to be accomplished in order to address this important issue with the large amount of investor, corporate, and civil society interest in this issue and have developed an aggressive schedule to accomplish this, to accomplish this project with an extensive stakeholder engagement plan. From our experience in standard setting, the role of the stakeholder engagement plan is crucial to our process and to this project. To the due to the significant amount of investor, corporate, and civil society interest in this issue, we wanted to ensure that the market consultation was extensive to account for a representative set of views. Lastly, given the complexity of this project and of this issue generally, we invested a significant amount of time in developing a strategy to ensure we were able to execute a high quality consultation to help us identify evidence to support the connectivity between human capital issues and financial impacts for our framework. In conclusion, we hope that this webinar has served as a helpful tool in understanding how the issue of human capital appears throughout our codified standards and has answered some fundamental questions about the project plan for the Human Capital Research Project. If you still have any additional questions about this project, please don't hesitate to reach out to Kelly Okuji Wilson at kelly at sasb.org or kelly.okuji hyphen Wilson at sasb.org. For questions about evidence sourcing for this project, please watch our other webinar entitled Materiality Assessment and Evidence Sourcing, which is presented by SASB's Director of Research of Projects, David Parham, to learn more about how we assess the materiality of a given topic, which evidence we consider when we assess materiality of a topic, and how these concepts tie to the human capital research project specifically. With that, thank you for joining us.